Hey everyone, Chad with Data Prep U again. Today's session is all about workflow optimization. This is always a hot topic. And the real key to keep in mind always is to reduce the amount of data going through your workflow. Less is more. The less amount of data you have, the faster it will run. Now let's take a look at this workflow. Now we're looking here at a database of US chronic disease indicators. Now this is specifically in the United States and it has quite a bit of information. If we actually take a look at the input data tool itself and the results window, we can see there's 523,000 or so records that are in this one CSV file. So let's say I took this uh, workflow from someone else and I'm trying to optimize it, trying to help them out a little bit. Um, the overall workflow itself actually took 13 seconds to run. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's not really that big of a deal, but this could be 13 minutes to run. And how do we actually reduce that time to still get what we need, but also to be able to rapidly explore our data and rapidly discover specific things about our data? Now, there are a couple of different things here. One, if I actually take a look at this browse tool of what they did here, they took all of the latitudes and, lo latitudes and longitudes, they parsed them out using the regular expression tool, the regex tool, and then they actually used a create points tool here to visualize these just very, very quickly on a map. Now, as I do this, I immediately see kind of a big red flag. This is supposed to be in the US, but clearly there's data over here uh, uh, way, way, way west. Uh, so, uh, I mean, um, I could say this is actually probably even further over into the uh, past the international date line, so technically it's east. So there's some issues going on with this data. Now, because of this, geospatial data takes a lot of space. It can consume a lot of data. So even just taking a look at this, if I were to zoom in, I can very quickly and easily see that this is actually nothing more than the center point of each state. So as I zoom in, I can see that this is 500 and something thousand records of the exact same 50 or so points over and over again. So I immediately can take that out. So what I am going to do is actually remove the create points here completely and go ahead and reconnect this. Now there is that delete and reconnect around or connect around option as well. But I'm even going to go into the, uh, the, the select tool here and I would actually go in and remove that geolocation field. So the field that is actually being split out into those latitudes and longitudes. Now, in this particular case, I'm not gonna do that. I just wanna actually show what happens whenever you start to remove that data, whenever you take that geospatial data out. It actually runs much, much faster. So that original one was around 13 seconds. You can see this one actually goes through and runs in nine seconds. So we're already shaving off about a quarter of the time. Now, in addition to that, the auto field tool is a very, very helpful tool. It will actually go through every single record in every single field and determine the best field type without any data loss. That's the key. So if you have leading zeros, for example, it will keep it as a text field. However, it does take time to process through all of that data. So if you were to remove this tool and manually go through and make those changes using a select tool yourself, you're going to get a much more optimized data set. So just a couple of things to keep in mind there. Now, the final thing that I also, that I always like to try to look at is, how much data do you really need to begin your exploration? Now here, uh, one little known uh, op option in the input data tool is the record limit option here. And what this record limit does is it allows you to say, you know what, let's just start with uh, 10,000 records or so uh, instead of the entire 523,000 records. Now what that does is that obviously lets you go through much, much faster here in 0.8 seconds just for that development, just for that discovery piece of things. Now if you find yourself saying, you know what, I need all of my data all the time, I, I would recommend that you rethink that mentality because the reality is, is you can get the vast majority of your development done on just a sample of data. I don't think I've ever or rarely have had to actually take in every single record in every single field every single time because that's actually just really, really inefficient and you don't need that. You can sample your data 
while you go through those specific processes. Now, uh, so again, tips to highlight uh, here, as you can see in the upper right hand side is less data equals faster workflows. You can begin with less data for development and then essentially unleash the hounds, thinking back to uh, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons here, to open up everything once you've finished out that development piece. And then my last thing that I always, always recommend is documentation is a form, in my opinion, is a form of an optimized workflow. Why is that? Well, when I deliver a workflow to a colleague or a customer, if they don't have to come back to me and ask those questions, that to me is much more optimized. That allows them to perform their analysis to get into the workflow and understand what actually happened much faster and much more efficient than they normally would. If you have your additional or if you have your own optimization techniques and tips, please feel free to put them in the comments. Well, I'd love to see those and I'd love to hear what other folks are doing as well. Once again, this is Chad with Data Prep U. Thanks again for listening. Please, if you liked what you saw, click the subscribe button and don't forget to leave those comments. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week.